that's three fat cattle away we'll get them back to the butchery in 10 11 days or so and then they'll hang for a bit longer uh, about a week week another 10 days and that'll give us the right amount of hanging time to produce good meat i didn't really explain it but basically on the farm for the last few years we've had anywhere from 30 to 50 fattening cattle so that's basically we buy in cattle that are 12 to 16 months we keep them for a few months fatten them up and then they go through the butchery so alongside that just now we're bringing on the breeding cattle so if we're able to then start bringing those numbers up we can reduce the number of um, cattle we buy in at 12 to 16 months we'll, we'll take it all from um, the calf stage right the way through these are new to the farm at the end of last year we got them as 15 cows so we've had nine calves so far there's another six due and then we'll be hoping to build up the numbers a bit over the coming years and that'll just basically allow us to be completely self-sufficient on the beef side of things the the calves will be born here they'll be fed here they'll be butchered here they'll be sold and consumed here as well and then they're also fed from barley we grow protein source is oilseed rape we grow the bedding and the straw is straw from the barley we grow so other than minerals and some vet bills it's all within ourselves it's all self-contained we know what quality we're producing we know we're producing good quality for the shop and you can see exactly where it comes from how it's spread so these calves these were born these three of them were born about a month and a half ago and um, there's another few in here that were born just last week they're all ready to go outside just once the rain stops once it dries up a wee bit So the calves, they lie on straw and the cows. Uh, and as the straw gets dirtier, you then put down more straw and the dung from below acts as a heat source. It's like an electric blank blanket for them. So all the cattle in the UK have uh, passports, passport numbers, uh, and that's to record their movements. You can see where the cattle beasts have been and it's used um, for traceability for disease control. Much like your own passport, when you go on holiday and you get a stamp, these guys all get a stamp as well in their own passport. The owner puts a label of their address when it moves to their farm. These ones will all stay here, so they'll not get any of that. They'll remain on this farm until they're big enough to go through the butchery. So far, our cows have been quite good, but you need to be wary at pregnancy time. They can get a bit twitchy, a bit hormonal and they can have a go for you, protecting their calf. So you need to be careful there. be about 600 kilo and you stand no chance in the way of them. Last video's question, what were the flags in the neighbor's fields for? If you're scaring away pigeons, geese. Today's question, it's quite an easy one. What is this machine? Just chasing geese off the wheat again. Back. We had the shooters out so kept them away for a while and there's less of them but they're still here. So this is a normal wheat plant, it's doing fine, there's probably about eight or nine towers so that'll be eight or nine stems coming up with individual seed heads and what the geese do is they just nip away and you end up with four or five. So you've almost half your yield from this seed if those stems don't recover it seems a bit insignificant a few geese on a big massive field like this but when you've got two three thousand of them it can fairly cause a lot of damage pretty quickly we're going to get one of the workshop jobs done this is an old diesel tank it's going to be a feeder for the cattle so we've cut a slot in it folded that back this is where they'll put their heads in to eat the feed will be tipped in there with a forklift and as they eat they'll draw it more from the hopper above just need some feet and a few a bit of welding to be done i'm just welding legs onto this feeder now so how this works this is the welder here and it's basically like miniature lightning 
and use the heat from that to melt wire that's going into it. So that's a bit of weld there. So this, this machine has a wee wire feed and then between the wire feed and this metal is a tiny wee bit of lightning and that lightning heat makes the spool of wire coming out molten and the surroundings molten so they fuse as one and then as they cool down they solidify again and you get welds like that just left that trough at home and um, i've got a phone call from one of the guys on the farm that the forklift along here the fuel filter's got a seal on the base of it that's leaking so air is getting in and it's causing the revs to be all over the place so i've got a seal kit here hopefully there'll be one in there that'll fit it wasn't this forklift with the issue but i'll explain explain what the issue is on this forklift so this is a fuel filter so fuel goes through this before it reaches the engine this takes out any dirt or debris that might be in the fuel and what had happened the base of it was leaking whether it was a crack or the seal was gone but i don't think it was the seal so we put a new one in and it seemed to still leak so it must have a crack in the base so we think air is getting in the crack and making its way to the engine and that's causing the revs in the engine to fluctuate so we've ordered a new one of them we'll fit that tomorrow it should arrive in the morning see if that solves the issue So that's the filler well wire that goes in melts well the surface of this melts as well and they fuse together there's loads of fumes coming off and i was wondering where they're coming from but just melted the end of my clamp. That's those legs on both sides now. It's ready to go outside, it'll get a power wash and then a lick of paint in the next few days when it dries up, when there's a chance, and then it'll go along and be ready for filling with feed. It'll probably take about one and a half, two tonne of feed in it. So that should keep them going for longer than filling their troughs every day with a wheelbarrow. Just adding this wee bar in here, that's where the cats put their heads over because this is quite thin, so I don't want them to run their necks along that. So I'll put a bar in that'll stop that happening. It probably won't happen, but just to be safe. So that's it, the feeder out the workshop now. I'm just taking it around to the bay where we wash, wash everything. Just getting a wash, and then a lick of paint. I was in the workshop quite a while because it was kind of a start stop job whenever it was the rain came on we'd spend a bit of time on it but that's it done now we'll get it along the road and it'll be handy for feeding the cattle along there save a bit of time Just giving that a power wash. It's really sunny today, so it should dry out fairly quickly. Uh, then it needs a paint and it can go along the road. Cattle feeder is finished, ready to go along the road and get filled up. It looks a little bit less homemade now it's painted. If you look up close, it definitely does. It's a nice from far, far from nice kind of job, but the cattle won't mind. They'll get fed out of it, so they'll be happy and it'll hold the feed. It'll be much quicker than how we do it at the moment. Save a bit of time in the morning. So, done, ready to go. There we 
go, strap that down, good to go. Doesn't look half bad that. That's how it started. And that's it finished. Feeders in, dogs barking. I thought I was gonna get stuck down there actually, which would have been a bit of a nightmare. That's never a good call, phoning the boss man, telling him you're stuck. You don't get a good response. So that's everything for this video. If you're enjoying the videos, let me know. Don't forget to answer the questions down below. And if you subscribe and like, it helps the videos do better. So if you could do that too, thanks.